Hi, welcome to this course. Install Mac OS on an Azure VM. Why would we want to install Mac OS on an Azure VM and other free training? This is just a very brief lesson breakdown. Again, this is part of the Azure Fun course. So Mac on a Windows VM. Why would you want to run a Mac OS on a Windows VM? Well, the reason may you may want to do this is so that you can learn how to get to grips with Apple Mac OS operating system. It's a great tool for learning to train with. It's also fun to learn about new tech. So what do we need in order to get this up and running? Well, you'll need VMware Workstation or VMware Player, and that's free. And you can get both from the VMware works, uh, website. You can go ahead and type in VMware in Google. It'll take you out to VMware and you can grab it. The VMware Workstation is a paid product, but you can get a 30-day trial for free. Or if you want a free version, you can download VMware Player for free. You'll need the VMware Unlocker script, which is provided with this course. You'll need an ISO of the Mac version you plan to use. So I would suggest you go out and do some Google uh, homework, and you will definitely be able to find ISOs of various Mac OS operating systems out there. You can then download the one you want to use so that you can get on and use this lab. You'll also need an Azure account to be able to complete this lab. So you, if you don't have an Azure account, go out to Microsoft Azure, sign up for a free account, and then you'll be able to do this lab. If you have a free account, then you're almost there already. So check out some of the other free courses that I have at Udemy. As you can see, I've got some Azure real world hands on training for beginners, as well as deploying Azure virtual desktop in less than 45 minutes. So that being said, let's go out and let's get our hands dirty. Let's go and install Azure um, VM and let's go and put Mac OS. In our case, we're going to install uh, Mac OS Catalina. So I look forward to seeing you in the lab. Hi, as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've logged into the portal. So we want to navigate to resource groups. I've done that by clicking resource groups in my side menu. Or you can go to the top and just type in RES and select resource groups from the drop down. This will take you to the resource blade. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a resource group. So click create. I'm going to paste the name in for my resource group. My resource group, I'm going to call it Mac OS Lab Catalina. I'm going to leave it in the East US. Click review and create. This will do a validation check. Click create. This will go away and create that resource group for us. Once that resource group has been created, it will show up here. We can navigate to our bell notification icon at the top here. And this tells us our resource group was created successfully. If you come down and you click the refresh button, you will see now we have a resource group that we can put our VM that we are going to install Mac OS on. So that completes this part of the lab and I look forward to seeing you in the next lab. Now that we have successfully created our resource group, let's go and create a VM. So click Virtual Machines, click Create, and select Virtual Machine from the drop-down. This will bring up our VM uh, creation uh, blade. So let's go ahead and select that resource group, Mac OS Lab Catalina. Let's give our VM a name. I'm going to just paste this in. I'm going to call it Mac OS Catalina VM. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select a Windows 10 virtual machine. So I'll select Windows 10 Pro Gen uh, Generation 1. So again, what you need to do is if you're selecting your VMs uh, with Catalina, you want to make sure you select the enterprise version, not the Pro version like I've done, or it won't work. So I'm going to select Windows 10 Enterprise Gen version 2. I'm going to make sure my standard size is E4S underscore V4 and make sure that it's uh, 4 BCPUS uh, and 32 gigs of memory. I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to call it AZ Admin. I'm going to go and type in my password. Type in my password again. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to confirm I have um, eligible rights to do this because it's an enterprise VM. I'm going to click next on disks. I'm going to just leave it at the premium SSD. You can always drop down and select standard if you want. 
but because this is a lab uh, it's not going to be too much of a problem I'm going to go ahead and click next on networking I'm going to accept the defaults I'm going to go next on management I'm going to disable boot diagnostics because I don't need that and I'm going to turn off auto shutdown because I'm not worried about auto shutdown I'm going to click next on the advanced tab I'm going to click next on the tagging I'm going to click next to do a review and create now this is going to go away it's going to do a validation check and if I pass the validation check it's going to turn green at the top now I'm going to click create and this is going to go away and it's going to create that virtual machine for us and this can take anywhere from two minutes to ten minutes depending on the type of virtual machine you've selected so again we'll just wait for this virtual machine to deploy and as you can see it's deploying it pretty quick it's created the public IP address it's created the network security group it's created the virtual network the network interfaces and now it's deploying the actual virtual machine itself so again it shouldn't take too long to deploy and as you can see our machine has been deployed successfully and we can click the bell notification at the top here and this tells us all of our resources that were deployed without any issues so I'm going to close that down and I'm going to click go to resource this is going to take us straight to our VM I'm going to go ahead and click connect and I'm going to use RDP to connect to that virtual machine and I'm going to go ahead and download that RDP file I'm going to click open to connect and I'm going to click connect and I'm going to just drag this over type in AZ admin type in my password hit enter it's just opened up on a second screen I'm going to go ahead and click yes to connect to that virtual machine and it's just waiting for me to log on and then uh, it's opened up on another screen so I'm just going to drag that over quickly and I'm logging on to my virtual machine that we've just created we just want to make sure we can log on once we've logged on to our virtual machine um, we can go ahead and carry on with the rest of the labs that we want to do so we'll just give that a second to fire up I'm going to go ahead and turn all this off because we're not worried about this and I'm going to click accept and there we go we have logged on to our virtual machine I just want to show you something if I go into uh, file explorer and I go to this PC you'll notice I only have one drive and that's because we're using a different version of the Windows uh, series or VM series that we have and I'm not talking about the Windows 10 I'm talking about the sizing series so that completes this lab I look forward to seeing you in the next lab as you can see I've logged back into my VM and I've gone ahead and I've pre-downloaded my Mac uh, OS Catalina ISO VMware workstation uh, the Mac uh, tools for VMware and of course uh, VMware workstation so before we can run any of this we actually need to open up PowerShell so in the search just type in power and then open up PowerShell as an administrator and click run as admin I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger so that at least you can see what I'm doing in terms of the commands that I'm running so I'm gonna go and change the font to say 28 and then I will just drag that up <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and paste in a command here now this is a PowerShell command to enable the hypervisor platform because as you know all virtual machines that run in Azure run on Microsoft Hyper-V so you can't run Hyper-V and VMware Workstation together we need to do some behind the scenes to make it work so I'm going to go ahead and like I said, I've pasted that command in I'm going to press enter and that will go ahead and run that command for us and as you can see that command is running there's two commands that we need to run so that's the first one so we'll give that a second to run and then we'll run the second command and this is going ahead and enabling some stuff for us I'm going to go ahead and paste in the second command and if you notice the first command was the Hyper-V platform the second one is actually Microsoft Hyper-V itself so I'm going to go ahead and press enter as well and this is going to go ahead and run that command so once that command is run we can actually now go and install VMware workstation 
So we'll let that command run and then we'll set up VMware Workstation shortly. I'm going to go ahead and type in yes and press enter. That's going to do a reboot. And the reason it's doing a reboot because it needs to apply those settings that we've run. So I'll give it two or three seconds and then we'll log back in to that VM. And I've logged back into that VM. I'm just maximizing it. Now we're back into our virtual machine. The next thing we want to do is run VMware Workstation. And that's pretty easy to do. Just double click on the VMware Workstation uh, EXE that you downloaded from uh, VMware. Again, this will also work with VMware Player as well. So VMware Player is a free uh, uh, virtualization uh, tool from VMware, where VMware Workstation you have to pay for. So we'll just give this a sec and then we'll carry on with the installation. And as you can see, it's asking us to walk through some steps. So we click next. I'm going to accept the agreement. Go next. I'm going to enable enhanced keyboard. I'm going to leave everything as the default. So I'm going to go next again. I'm going to turn this off because I don't want to join their user experience uh, program. Click next. Click next. And click install. Now this will run away and do the installation. And it should take uh, probably about a couple of seconds, maybe a minute or two. So we'll just wait for the install to complete. And there we go. The installation is complete. I'm going to go ahead and enter my license key. If you don't have a license key, that's OK, because you can uh, run VMware Workstation for 30 days without actually entering a license key or buying a license. So I'm just going to pause the video quickly while I go and enter my license key. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and I entered my license key. I'm going to click finish. It's going to ask for another reboot. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And we'll just give that again probably another minute or so to uh, shut down and reboot. And then we will log back in to VMware. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've logged back into my VM. And you can see over here, VMware Workstation. Um, double clicked on it. It's opening up. We just want to make sure that it can open up so it can so that completes this part of the lab I look forward to seeing you in the next lab where we will actually go and install uh, Mac OS So as you can see we installed VMware workstation successfully So the next thing we need to do is close VMware workstation down I'm going to open up my VMware script. This is in the tools of the training, so you'll be able to run it. I'm going to right mouse click on the Win install and say Run as Administrator. This is going to go away and it's going to run that script. And what this script does, it unlocks features in VMware that allows us to install the Mac OS operating system. So we'll just give it a second for it to go ahead and do its thing. And then the script should close automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and close this down. And I'm going to double click on VMware Workstation Pro to open it up. I'm going to click Create a New VM. I'm going to go Next. I'm going to say I'll install the operating system later. Click Next. And now we have the Mac OS in our menu here. And you can see we've got all of the versions of Mac. So I'm going to stick with uh, 10.15. That's Catalina. I'm going to go Next. And I'm going to give my um, virtual machine a name. So I know exactly what it is because just saying Mac OS 10.15 may not make sense to me. And I'm going to call it Catalina Mac OS 10.15. I'm going to go next. I'm going to store it as a single VM and I'm going to just increase the size of that VM. I'm going to change it to 45. I'm going to go ahead and click next. I'm going to customize the hardware by clicking the customize button and I'm going to drag this up to 16 gigs of RAM. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the uh, new CD or DVD. I'm going to click the ISO and I'm going to browse and I'm going to browse to my desktop and I'm going to select that Catalina ISO and I'm going to select open and I'm going to click close and I'm going to click finish. So we have now prepared our VM to install uh, Mac OS. So I'm going to go ahead and power this virtual machine on by powering it on. I'm going to ignore this warning and click OK. 
and this is now going to boot uh, into the Mac OS ISO and as you can see here VMware is firing up and there's the Mac uh, ISO uh, logo for installing Mac and this is how you would install Mac whether you are doing it on a physical Mac itself or in a, another virtual environment so again this can take anywhere from uh, 20 to 45 minutes to install the Mac installation does take a bit of time because it's doing a whole lot of bits and pieces in the background so we'll just uh, wait for this to deploy and through the magic of video we'll kind of jump backwards and forwards so that you can see the progress of this happening also uh, I want you guys to be aware that when you're installing Mac OS it will require a free uh, couple of reboots as you go along with the installation so that's something to bear in mind as well if you've never installed Mac OS and as you can see we've brought up our menu we can decide what uh, English want to use I'm just going to use Australia I'll just come here and click the arrow button to continue the installation and then I'm going to navigate over to disk utility I'm going to click continue on disk utility this will open up the disk utility and I need to go and prepare my disk for Apple Mac if I don't do this I won't be able to install Mac on my disk so I'm going to go ahead and click erase and I'll click erase again this will go ahead and erase and set up our Mac with that extended journal partitioning that Mac uses to allow us to install the Mac OS operating system I'm just going to move over and close this down and I'm going to select install Mac OS I'm going to select continue this will go away and allow me now to continue the installation of my Mac now that our Mac is booted up I'm going to go ahead and select New Zealand and I'm going to go down and select continue to continue with the installation of Mac and I'll go ahead and I'll just say continue again and I'll just go ahead and click continue again click continue this will now sign up for my network so that I can have internet access and this won't take too long to complete I'm going to go ahead and click continue again on the data privacy I'm going to say don't transfer any info now because it's a new Mac and go next I'm going to um, say sign up later because I don't have an Apple Mac ID at the moment and I'll say skip I'll accept the agreement click agree type in a name so I'll just call it Mac OS give it a password and then click continue very, very quick I'll just click continue again on the customized settings and just say continue one more time and we should now be ready to go and now we should be able to log into our Mac and as you can see now it's setting up our Mac for the very first time so it didn't take us long uh, in terms of getting the Mac up and running it did take a good 30 minutes 35 minutes my side to install Mac but we'll just wait another minute or two for it to continue its uh, installation and there you go you have successfully set up Apple Mac on a VMware workstation running in Azure and I'm going to go ahead and just eject that CD because we don't need it anymore by right mouse clicking and just saying eject Mac uh, OS Catalina and that's it that's how we set up uh, Apple Mac so again I look forward to seeing you in the next video 
as we continue through this training exercise. As you can see, I've gone ahead and we've logged back into our Windows VM in the Azure portal. And we've got our Mac OS running on VMware Workstation. Now we can work with our Mac within VMware Workstation, which is great, but you can also RDP to your Mac without having to go into VMware Workstation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize that. And I've got VNC Viewer. So you can download VNC Viewer for free. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect using VMC Viewer. And as you can see, I've added my IP address in there and I've already connected to my Mac OS. And as you can see, I'm now using my Mac OS as if I was working with remote desktop. There's my system preferences. Um, this will bring me up a whole lot of information about my things, uh, system preferences. If I wanted to find out my Mac uh, address, I could click on the console. This will open up the console. I could go ahead and just type in ifconfig, press enter, and this will tell me my IP address. And that's the IP address I used to RDP to this Mac, to VNC. So it's really awesome. Like I say, you can go through uh, VNC uh, to connect to your Mac. You can come down here, you can actually work within your Mac if you wanted to. You can go to my computer, get more information, and really learn how to drive Apple Mac. Again, I can go back to the Mac settings here. I can say about this Mac, and this will pop up and tell me more information about my Mac. And it's really pretty stable, it's pretty quick. So again, depending on your VMware uh, workstation, depending on your Azure VM, the, your settings will determine how fast your uh, Mac OS will respond. So again, you can install any version of Mac OS right up to the latest version as well. I'd like to thank you for viewing. I'd like to thank you for supporting me on LinkedIn and Udemy and uh, my YouTube channel. And I look forward to seeing you in future training lessons. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone. You guys all have a great day. Hi, as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've logged back into my Azure virtual machine that's running a VMware Workstation Pro. Also, if you notice, I've got VMware Workstation Player. Now the difference between player and pro is, pro is a full version. It gives us a lot more flexibility and a lot more functionality. Where player gives us a lot of stuff, but it's free. So let's go ahead and install something in player. So I'm gonna double click on VMware Workstation Player. I'm just gonna move this to the center of the screen. And I'm gonna create a new virtual machine. And I'm gonna go next, I'll install an operating system later. And I'm gonna install Windows XP Pro. Let's go next. And let's just change this to Windows XP Professional. I'll take that out and go next. And let's change this to 16 gig or 17 gig. We'll change it to 17 gig. We'll make sure we're gonna store it as a single disk file. Click next. Click customize hardware. I'm just gonna scroll up and make this four gig. Then I'm going to actually go to the CD icon at the top here, CD slash DVD. I'm gonna click the ISO image file. I'm gonna to browse to the ISO image that I've downloaded, which is Windows XP Pro. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click close and click finish. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start that virtual machine. As you can see, that virtual machine has now been added for us. So let's click the play button at the bottom here. And this will go ahead and fire up that Windows XP uh, machine for us. And we can go ahead and install Windows XP. The nice thing about running VMware Workstation or uh, Oracle VirtualBox uh, gives us the flexibility to install these older third-party uh, applications, operating systems, as well as non-Microsoft operating systems as well. So we'll just give it a minute or two for it to uh, do the install and then we'll carry on. It's just doing a whole lot of checks, as you can see. Once these checks have completed, we will then be able to start the installation of Windows XP. And as you can see, it's asking us to do some stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the Enter key. I'm gonna press F8 to uh, agree to the license. And I'm gonna go ahead and press Enter to install Windows XP on this partition. 
and as you can see at the bottom underneath the gray bar that goes across it it says it's, it's examining the disk so we'll wait for the disk to examine and then we can carry on and we can do the format and then we can start the install of Windows XP again that shouldn't take too long to complete so we'll just wait for that to pop up and as you can see it popped up pretty quick and we get different formats if we're installing a 32-bit version we can use FAT but in our case we're using a 64-bit version so we're going to use uh, the file system the NTFS file system and I'm going to select quick format it's a lot more secure and also it makes Windows run a lot better and a lot smoother so I'm going to select the format partition using the NTFS file system uh, in the brackets quick and press enter and this is going to go away now and it's going to format that partition for us once that partition has formatted it'll reboot and then we can carry on with the Windows XP installation And as you can see Windows is now rebooting so again we could go ahead and press enter on our keyboard and this would reboot Windows XP um, automatically but that's okay it's only, gonna, it's only gonna take a few seconds for it for this bar to move across and then Windows XP will reboot automatically and then we can carry on with our Windows XP installation And as you can see it didn't take too long to reboot and there's our nice little Windows logo and we will now start the installation of Windows XP professional and for a lot of you that have been in the IT industry for a while this will bring back memories so I hope you have fun doing this lab and I hope you have fun watching this so again uh, this won't take too long to install even though it says it's 39 minutes in reality this is only going to be about 10 or 15 minutes because again computers today and computer powering is much more powerful than those that were way back when Windows XP came out so we'll just wait for this to continue the installation And there you go it's asking us now to customize our Windows XP installation so we can click the customize button I can go to the drop down I can click the uh, drop down over here and I can scroll up until I find my country I'm based in New Zealand so I will scroll down and I will select uh, New Zealand and the same over here I could click in here and I could scroll up until I find New Zealand or you could just use the keyboard and type uh, NE and that should take us straight to New Zealand as well so just scrolling there we go and there's New Zealand then I will click apply click OK and click next I'll give it a name I'll just call this uh, XP Pro organization I'll just call it uh, XP and then I'll go next and I'll just pause the video here while I go ahead and enter my license key so I've gone ahead and entered my license key so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this machine a name I'll just call it uh, XP PC I'm not going to worry about a username or password I'm going to click next and I'm going to 
select my time zone which is Auckland Wellington and that's near the bottom so I'm just going to drag this all the way down and select Auckland Wellington from the bottom oops sorry it didn't drag all the way down properly there we go Auckland Wellington click next and now it's going to go ahead and install all of those network drivers and any other drivers that it needs to get my uh, Windows XP up and running. I'm going to go ahead and click next because I'm going to use the typical settings. If I was on a domain, I could join it to a domain, but in our case, it's just a work group. So I'm going to go next and this will now carry on and complete the installation of Windows XP. As you can see, it's copying all the files. It'll be really quick. Even though the setup time says it'll take 25 minutes or 26 minutes, it'll be a lot quicker than that because this is running on a high powered computer and it's got a lot of memory and it's got a lot of CPU and a lot of resources to speed up the installation. So we'll just hang five while the installation carries on. And as you can see, the installation is completed. Windows XP is quickly doing a reboot. So we'll just wait for it to reboot. And there you go, Windows XP is loading. So we'll wait for it to load and then we should log straight into our desktop for the very first time. And there we go, Windows XP has loaded and we've logged into our desktop and we get a little bit of a warning so our, our computer's at risk, but that's fine. We can just click on that just to uh, close that down. And then of course, if we click on this little icon here, this will telling us that we need to go and adjust our display. So I'm gonna say don't uh, sh show that in the future, click yes. And there we go. We are now running Windows XP. And for those that remember Windows XP, this will all look very familiar to you. So that's how you install Windows XP, an older operating system in VMware Player. And like I said earlier on, you know, it's very flexible. It allows us to run these older operating systems and non-Microsoft operating systems, just in case we feel the need that we need to, or we may be running some application that doesn't run on Windows 10 or Windows 11 or Server 2012. So hence the reason uh, having the flexibility of these third party virtualization tools. So that being said, I'd like to thank you for viewing and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hi, as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've logged back into the Azure portal. So what we've done is we've learned how to install a VMware Workstation onto our Azure VM and run Mac OS. We've installed VM Player and installed uh, an older version of Windows XP and ran that as well. And we explored a little bit um, around both of those products. Now what we want to do is we want to go in and we want to clean up our lab behind us so that we don't pay for anything. If I click on my resource group Mac OS Lab Catalina you can see inside here we've got all of our resources and there's our VM so at the end of the day we finished our lab so we want to go and clean up our resources so that we don't have anything there so that it, that we don't get charged for that because if we leave those resources running we'll get charged if you want to use those resources you can go to your virtual machine um, over here and you can click on your virtual machine we can click on that VM and that VM is running so if I click stop we click OK, this will stop that VM and it'll put that VM into a deallocated mode. And if it's, into, uh, if it's entered into a deallocated mode, that means you're not going to pay for it. 
which is fine because you may want to use that lab again for uh, another exercise or for another reason. So again, make sure that that lab has changed from a running status to a deallocated status. And if you look at the top here, you'll see that we have um, a notification telling us what's happening with our virtual machine. And sometimes if you hit the refresh button, you'll see now it was running. It's now changed to deallocating. But that doesn't mean it stopped. We've got to wait for it to go from deallocating to deallocated. Now, as you can see, it says stopped and it's a deallocated mode. That way we're not paying for our VM. Again, bear in mind when you're running VMware Workstation in uh, Azure, make sure you select one of these E4 uh, SB4 VMs. Um, and of course, use the enterprise version. So we want to go now and clean up our resource group so that we don't have anything uh, hanging about. So I'm going to go ahead and close that down. I'm going to navigate back to resource groups. I'm going to select my resource group here. I'm going to highlight my resource group, which is Mac Lab OS Catalina. I'm going to say copy and I'm going to say delete resource group. And I'm going to go ahead and paste. Uh, this delete button will become highlighted. Click delete and this will now go away and delete that resource group. Again, always pay attention to the notification icon at the top here because this tells you what was happening. As you can see before, our virtual machine uh, was stopped and we got a nice green uh, check mark here telling us that it was successful. So now we just need to wait while our uh, resource group goes away and gets deleted. Once our resource group has been deleted, our lab is back to a pristine uh, condition and we can go ahead and create more labs or redo this lab. So we'll just give this a minute or two to stop and then we'll confirm that it has uh, stopped and deleted everything. So we'll wait for that to uh, finish uh, deleting. And as you can see, we've got a notification here telling us that our resource group has been deleted. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss that and close that down. And as you can see, we're back at our resource groups again. Again, I can go ahead and delete this. This network watcher group was created automatically when we created a VM. And the reason it created that was in case we want to monitor that VM for any issues so that we may be able to resolve them in the future. So I can go ahead and click on that uh, resource group as well. I can highlight that Network Watcher resource group. Right mouse click, say copy, click the delete button here, paste the resource group in there and click delete again. And this will go away and delete that resource group for us. Again, always pay attention to the notification icon at the top here because this little bell notification icon is really important because it tells us what's going on. It tells us if you have any issues. And if you do have issues, it's pretty good at telling you where to go to fix or resolve those issues. So we'll just wait for that um, resource group to delete and then we'll close off the training. And as you can see, our resource group was successfully deleted. Let's dismiss all those notifications. Let's hit the refresh button. And there we go. Our portal is nice and clean, ready for the next lab. I'd like to thank you for doing this course with me. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. And I look forward to seeing you in the next course.